Okay, let's talk about free food. This is one of my favorite parts about life is that there are so many things that you're able to forge that a lot of people don't even know about. Excuse the noise in the background, my dad is mowing, so I'm going to try my best to speak as loudly as I can and as clearly as I can. Okay, so I'm super excited about this. This is wild muscadines, and they're growing in my backyard. I live in Oklahoma, and I think it's like zone 6 or 7, and uh, you can find these a lot. Now, one thing that I want to point out is that there's thousands of varieties of grapes out there. Now, they have many different kinds of leaves, but one of the surefire things, if I can find a good looking leaf, this one's all right, is that the edges will be serrated like this, and the venation will look like that. Now, as far as the texture of the leaf, it's all different. Some are smooth, some are soft. Um, there's just literally thousands of different varieties of this. Now, I'll tell you how I know that this is a type of muscadine, if I can find a tendril. Here we go, right here. Because this is another plant. This particular plant, it goes all the way up there. Travels over the top of those trees and all those little vines coming down. I mean, all of this is wild muscadine grapes, and I plan on making some jelly out of it. But back to what I was talking about. These have a split tendril. Now, most likely, this is a hybrid variety, and I'll show you why here in just a second. But a split tendril means just this. Whenever we started cultivating grapes here, they had one single tendril that came out. And these grapes came from, you know, different places like Spain and France, wherever that they were growing native there. But we already had wild muscadines here and what happened is there was a disease that came through that those non-native grapes were not used to and basically almost wiped out all the crops. So they found out how to crossbreed them with a wild muscadine, which has a forked tendril like that. And that enabled our grapes that we use for winemaking and just eating to be able to grow here because this fungus that attacks them wasn't able to do that anymore. At least I'm pretty sure that it's a fungus. Now let me show you why I think that this is an escaped cultivar, which is what most of these are and not pure wild muscadines, is take a look at that. This is the grape cluster. As you can see, they're not exactly ready yet. These will get real dark, almost black. And there's several of them. It's kind of hanging out up underneath there. Um, and they probably won't get much bigger than that. Now, the wild muscadines, they have clusters of 5 to 10, sometimes 15. But whenever it's an escaped cultivar, they have clusters to I believe 20 to 40 and another big difference is whenever they become ripe muscadines will get to be about twice the size of this grape this grape right here isn't any bigger than a pea and they do taste good so I've heard I'm pretty excited about trying these this year um, I've never seemed to be able to catch them at the right time um, but they do have a hard seed in the middle I mean, it's not, it's a good trail snack, but it's not much to really munch on. Um, I'm excited about making jellies out of it. Um, I've been waiting for a while for these to get good and ready. Now, there are certain varieties that are green, but I do not believe that this is a green variety because my mom and my neighbor actually has seen these whenever they were ready before I got interested in self-survival. And uh, turns out that those grapes were actually red. And this whole area is absolutely huge. I mean, they will take over just like a honeysuckle. We have those out here too. And it literally spreads the whole width of my backyard in the back. There's my mulberry tree. But, I mean, I guarantee you this is every bit of like a quarter of a football field at least. If not more. So, anyways, I just wanted to show you that. Um, 
they're really easy to cultivate just make sure that you have them in a place where you don't care if they uh, take over um, I myself have harvested some seeds before they started to produce fruit whenever I found some leftover dried up grapes from last year so it's hard to tell exactly what type of variety this is I would actually have to call a horticulture extension to figure that out um, and probably send them pictures of the leaf top and bottom as much detail as I could I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that it is a variety of grape and that I can eat it for consumption um, all of my older folks in my family have done this so anyways these grow everywhere if you're in Oklahoma just look on the side of the road there's thousands of varieties and people don't even realize it they just think that they're vines but they're actually some really awesome food so if you like this video and this helped you I invite you to subscribe um, tell a friend and go get you some grapes bye